In this video, we'll walk you through creating a real-time analytic on streaming data using ArcGIS Velocity. This tutorial builds on the previous lesson in which a feed was created that simulates AIS maritime shipping data. We'll configure an analytic to enrich this streaming shipping data with the U.S. Coast Guard District in which the simulated ship position is located. A real-time analytic runs against a feed and performs processing on each new message as it arrives. You can create a real-time analytic from either the main page or the real-time analytic list page. The first step in designing a real-time analytic is choosing the input feed. You can select an existing feed or create a new feed on the fly. For this tutorial, choose existing feed and browse to the feed that you previously created, which you named Ships Position Simulation, or similar. Once you confirm the selection of this feed, the real-time analytic editor opens. This is where you design your analysis process by configuring various tools and output actions. By default, the editor displays the analytic in workflow view, which is a linear step-by-step -step layout. Next, you should save your analytic. Although the process only contains one input feed at this point, saving early and often is best practice, so you can leave your work and return to it later if necessary. Give your analytic a descriptive name, such as AIS Real-Time Processing, and optionally a summary. Then click Create Analytic. Once the analytic is saved, several new options are available in the editor experience, such as sharing the analytic and help documentation. You should also see a list of error notifications at the top. These are validation messages that inform you if there's any issues in the analytic that would prevent it from being run successfully, such as not having outputs configured. An analytic can be saved at any time, and when validation is fully successful, the Run and Start button will be enabled. Next, we'll add tools that perform real-time processing on this maritime AIS data feed. With ArcGIS Velocity, you can build a sequence of successive processing steps in a pipeline from various inputs to various outputs. On the toolbar at the side, expand the Summarize Data button and select the Join Features tool. This adds it as the next step in your analytic process. We'll use the Join tool to enrich the inbound AIS data with the name of the U.S. Coast Guard District in which the ship is currently located. To do that, we need to obtain the Coast Guard District data. So click the Select Data button. Velocity allows you to bring in static, tabular, or vector data sources to enrich, overlay, and geofence against your real-time observations. You can easily access standard geographies like US or world admin boundaries. You can select a feature layer from your content or organization, or you can bring in data sets from cloud data stores or third-party APIs. For this tutorial, we'll bring in Coast Guard data from a feature layer. When adding a feature layer to an analytic, you can search for content available in ArcGIS, or you can enter a URL to a specific feature layer that's publicly available. If you're following along, this URL can be obtained from the Real-Time Analytic Quick Lesson in the ArcGIS Velocity documentation. After entering the URL, click the sublayer called U.S. Coast Guard Districts. Feature layers can have more than one sublayer, so this allows you to select the one that you really need. On the next screen, there's options to filter and reduce the amount of data that's imported. You can enter a SQL query to filter the data, or specify a subset of the feature layer's fields if you don't need all of the fields. Both of these are good practices to employ to reduce the time for data load. From here, the data configuration process mimics the process for creating a feed. Velocity queries the data source, obtains a few sample records or features, and derives the schema. And as with a feed, you can adjust incoming field names here or drop fields. Next, you can also identify key properties in the data source if they can't be automatically determined. In this case, since the data source is a feature layer with no date fields, the location and date time information are established for you. And as the Coast Guard data represents static boundary areas, it doesn't really have a track ID, although you can select district ID if you prefer. With that, the Coast Guard data is configured properly for use in your analytic as part of the Join Features tool. Now that a join data set's been established, the rest of the join features tool can be filled out. Under relationship, check the spatial relationship checkbox and choose intersects from the dropdown for the spatial relationship. In this lesson, you're detecting when any of the ships intersect a US Coast Guard district and you're joining that contextual information to the ship data, which can then be used for increased situational awareness, 
or further analysis. Next, you'll configure the summary fields. For attribute, choose district NA. For statistic, choose any. For the output field name, update the default to district name to make the name more readable. The any statistic means that of the records that satisfy the join, of which there could be several, you'll grab any value from the indicated field to append to the input data. In this case, the Coast Guard districts delineate distinct areas, and they don't overlap, so a ship will never join to more than one district at a time. So the any statistic serves as a way to select the district name value from that single join record. Click the Apply button to apply the updated tool properties. And at the top of the analytic toolbar, click Save to save your changes. Next, click the button on the far side of the green toolbar. This allows you to toggle the analytic editor between its different views. This view is called Model View, and it represents your analytic on a graphic canvas with a flowchart-like visualization. Model View and Workflow View can be used interchangeably when your analytic has a single processing pipeline like this one does. When you create complex analytics with multiple processing paths, you work in Model View only. At this point, we'll add two outputs to the analytic that allow you to store and visualize the data. Expand the Outputs menu on the toolbar and select Feature Layer New. When storing data to an output layer, you have a couple of different options that serve different real-time use cases. For Data Storage method, you can choose to add all new features or keep just the latest feature. Keeping the latest feature retains only the latest observation for each track, in this case, each ship. The Add New Features options retains all incoming data rather than the most recently received features. In this case, you'll choose Keep Latest Feature. For each time the analytic runs, choose Replace Existing Features and Schema. If this box is checked, each time the analytic is started, any existing data in the output feature layer will be deleted, and the schema of the output feature layer will be regenerated based on the analytic process. This option is useful when you're developing and testing your analytics and adding, removing, or changing tools between runs. With these two settings, you may notice that the data retention options are hidden. A data retention policy is not necessary if you're only keeping the latest feature, as your data set's not likely to grow indefinitely over time. Click Next to proceed to the next step. For the output feature layer name, enter something descriptive, like shipping inside USCG districts. And for the summary, you can enter something like ship traffic inside the U.S. Coast Guard districts. And click Complete to finish configuring the new feature layer output. This adds the new output node to your analytic. In Model View, as you can have multiple processing pipelines, you explicitly connect nodes together. So connect the output port of the Join Features tool to the input port of the new feature layer output. It's a good idea to save the analytic at this time. Notice also that the validation of your analytic is successful and there's no errors. This analytic is now ready to run. But first we'll add a second output that will send these features also to a stream layer. A second output isn't necessary, but stream layers are useful if you're interested in seeing new information added to the map automatically. The first step in creating an output stream layer is optionally to select a related feature layer. This is only necessary if your outgoing data doesn't have geometry and you'd like to associate it with an existing feature layer that supplies the geometry based on a join field. In this case, this doesn't apply, so go ahead and click Next to continue. With that, the only remaining step is to name the output stream layer. So for output name, you can enter something like shipping inside USCG districts underscore stream just to differentiate it from the feature layer output. And again, optionally, you can enter a summary. Click Complete, and as before, connect the output port of the Join Features tool to the input port of your new stream layer. Save these changes. The Real-Time Analytic, again, now has all the necessary feeds and outputs. Click Start at the top of the Analytic Editor. When running, the Real-Time Analytic will receive each simulated ship position, join it to the U.S. Coast Guard District it's located in, attach the name of that Coast Guard District to the feature, and write the output data both to a new output feature layer and an output stream layer. 
The Start button automatically transitions from Initializing to Stop. And once the Start button says Stop, that means the analytic is fully running. Now that the real-time analytic is running, we'll add these output layers to a web map. This can be accomplished by right-clicking an output layer and clicking Open in Map Viewer or Open in Scene Viewer. This opens a new browser tab and takes you to the Arctis Online Map Viewer. You may wish to change the base map to either the dark gray or light gray canvas base map to simplify the map visualization. Next, click the Add Data button in the Map Viewer and choose to add a layer from the web. In the entry box for the URL, paste the URL to the Coast Guard Districts layer that you used in the real-time analytic. And then in the Contents pane, drag this layer below the first layer, which includes the positions of the ships as they're coming in in real time. Select one of the ship positions in the map to open the pop-up and explore its attributes. You'll note that each ship position is enriched with the name of the Coast Guard District in which the ship is currently located. This ship is in District 13, whereas if we move to California, which is within District 11, we can see that these ship positions are being enriched with District 11 accordingly. This feature layer displays the latest position of each ship, and to see the positions change, you can set a refresh interval, such as 0.1, to update the data in the map every six seconds and see that each simulated AIS ship position is enriched with the name of the associated Coast Guard district. Conversely, you can look at the stream layer output to see the streaming data with the enriched attribute. Use add data and search your content to bring in the new streaming output layer. With the stream layer, output data is pushed to the map immediately as it arrives. So we can zoom into this area and see the simulated ships moving about in the harbor here. And if we click on the pop-ups in this case, again, we can see that the ship is being enriched with the name of the US Coast Guard District in which it's located. This concludes our tutorial on designing a real-time analytic and enriching streaming data with its geospatial context. From here, you can add additional tools to the real-time analytic to perform geofencing or calculate motion statistics. Or you can collect the data over time and use a big data analytic to summarize the ship's tracks. Thanks for watching.